Hey guys, I'm Avra and welcome back to my channel. So today's video will be on Fitsu. It's a free open source tool for animated data stories and visualization. It has both the JavaScript library and also the Python library. And in this channel, as you know, we mainly deal with Python. So I'll introduce you today to IPyVisu. It's a Python version of Vitsu, which is for the Python notebooks. And in my opinion, this Python library has a lot of potential that we can leverage in order to create this captivating animated plots, which is very useful to reach to a wider audience who is from the statistical background or not from the statistical background. It's just few lines of code. It's mostly the dictionary based Python codes, which will help you to create this kind of plots. So without any further delay, let's dive onto the code and let's see how we can create a very small demo case study to have an idea about IPyVisual's workflow. Let's do that. So before we start writing the code, it's very important that we know how to install it. So you can see here in their GitHub repository, it's mentioned there we need to use pip install IPyVisual. That's how we install it. Also, the tools where it supports, it's very important that we check it. It's the Jupyter Lab, the Jupyter Lite, the Databricks, the Data Camp. I mean, it supports almost each and everything. The Streamlit, that's something which I will make a video later. I plan to do with this animated plots and the Streamlit front end. That will be very cool, right? So that's something which I will make. Go to the coding section. So here's the installation. It's pip install ipyvisu. That's how you're going to install it. And also another dependency which we need is pandas. You can install pandas using pip install pandas. You will find other tutorials on pandas which in my same channel. But why we need pandas? We need pandas because today we will uh, make this animated plots using this particular CSV file which is a FIFA World Cup attendance sheet. Since we recently just witnessed the Qatar World Cup, I was really curious to analyze those data and to visualize those data. 22 rows, uh, we need the first 21 rows basically. We will load this using the pandas data frame. Uh, you can have your own Google sheet, which is basically the .xls format or .csv format, doesn't matter. You need to use pandas just to load or dump those data in a data frame. Let me just reinstall it, right? In my computer, it's already installed, so it will show requirements satisfied. Uh, otherwise, you know, computer, it's the first time it will install all the dependencies. The next thing is uh, the SSL certification, which probably is not required for you, but for me, it's required. I just need to run this code also. It's it's optional. We need to import the dependency. As I mentioned before, the two key things out here is IPyVisu, the main player of today's tutorial. The next is Pandas to load this particular CSV file. Now, zoom into this part of this code. IPyVisu has a couple of modules. One of them is the chart, the data, the config, and the style. This is very crucial out here to their documentation part. Here we see that IPyVisu chart options has three key arguments. One of them is the data where we just add the data frame within it. We supply or feed the data in this particular object. Then the config, the config is mainly useful for all this in the x-axis, the y-axis, uh, all these things comes under the config. Then comes the style, which helps you to maintain your own style of the plots, padding size, all these things, the label, the font size, all can come under the style. So these things are very important. Otherwise, the animate function of IPyVisual does the rest of the work. So now if you see the uh, data, I will load this uh, from the same folder where I kept my IPY where the notebook uh, file. The same folder, there is a CSV file. From there, I will load pandas pd.read CSV. If you have XLS file, it is pd.read XLS, something like that, something similar. Text, TXT, you can read using pandas. One key important thing out here is the D type or the data type of that particular column here. Okay, normally in pandas, it comes as a, a date time format, but in IPyVisu, while well, using IPyVisu, at this moment, if I'm not wrong, IPyVisu only accepts in a string format. And then I just remove the one last row, which suggests the overall, we don't need that. We are just curious about from 1930 to 2022. And I will just run this part of the cell and you will see all these data are loaded. We play now with the IPyVisu data object. First, we say data is data, basically the module which we imported before here. Uh, here we imported this module, right? And once we have this, we add the data frame on within it. We feed the data uh, object with the data frame, which is basically a DF, which is our pandas data frame. Here we imported, the, uh, you know, we fit it with that, say, type data and it is let's say it's printed something you see it's ipyvisual.animation.data that's the uh, the type of its uh, of this data variable now it can display this whole thing by display df now we are 
happy that our data is fitted inside this ipyvisu.data object. So once we're done with this part, the next part comes is the style sheet. I won't go to the style sheet first. Uh, why we added all this style, it's, it's later. It's not so important at this moment. We'll come to that. Before that, I will just create a chart object, which is more important here. So this is the first time we will populate with the ipyvisu chart. So how we do that? If you see the first line of the code, it says, chart this chart is a module which we imported here if you see this is the module out here we imported that module so that we can use it here and this module has uh, two arguments at this moment it has the width which i gave around 800 pixels and the 500 pixel the height and then we say chart animate data so if i just run until this part of the code you will see it's a blank IPyVisu chart is created. You can also check the type of it. It's a blank IPyVisu chart. We'll use the animate uh, to make a plot out of it. So for that, we'll use the config model, which we just imported. There we put the X as the year, the Y as the total attendance and the host. So basically we are taking this total attendance and also the host uh, for that, for the Y, okay, for populating. It will be an area chart. That's why it's important to write the geometry of it. Now, speaking of geometry, there are different types of geometry. You can make a circle chart, uh, which is basically the bubble chart, which you see. Uh, you can have a rectangle, which is basic uh, your bar, bar plot. So let's see how it works. And also the color. Uh, I think let's, let's come in this two part now. We can just come in this part as well. And we can run this part now. And you see this is a typical by default, it's a bar chart which is creating, right? And now I will populate with the label now. And you see, I have a label, which is basically the matches, which is split. But one key thing out here, it's all in dictionary format, okay? That's very key out here. You have to put in dictionary like the X and what is the key and the pair value, right? Uh, and then you can also make, convert this bar chart now to an area chart, that's very easy to do. You use this particular key called geometry and there you can put as area. So let me try that also. And I'll run this now again. You see now it became an area chart. And you can also like, let's see, I think this will also work if I say circle. And if I just run it like this, you see, it's all of them as well, like a circle. And uh, let me go back to area now. And uh, maybe we also want all of them to be, let's say, to be colored also based on the the host. So basically our hosts are different countries. And now you see, we have such a nice area plot with each country has its own color. That's pretty cool, right? That's something which I really like. But if you notice carefully, there's only one thing which I don't like here is this, all these year, the years are all, you know, overlapping. So that's where I need to use the style sheet. And that's something which you can also uh, put it inside your plot. So for that, I use a style sheet, which is the main for changing those year and all this thing in a much more, you know, slanting way. Uh, the main part comes here, the angle, okay? But apart from that, I also use a lot of other stuff to change the color and all this thing. Uh, you can check it, but the main thing comes here, the angle. And I have also changed the padding, right? All this thing, you can play with it. If you know how to do the CSS, it's very easy for you to we'll uncomment this two lines and now if I run it now you will see all this are a slanting way and I'm pretty sure a lot of things have changed here also if you observe it carefully it's all because of this style sheet study this style sheet it's based on a plot and the next section is the y-axis and the x-axis and there you have inside the label you have the font size the padding size of the label and also title you can change your color based on it right so that's how the style sheet is maintained. It's a lot of like a hierarchy one after other. It's very important in order to maintain this. But the key thing is it's all dictionary based. We still don't see any uh, animation here. We just see any other random uh, chart or the plot which he created. But it looks pretty nice. Right. Uh, next thing, you can also see the type of the chart, which is typically the Visu uh, chart type. But I will just store it using the chart.store, okay? This particular method is helpful for storing uh, iPad visual charts. So once we're done with this part, the next, from the next part onwards, our animation starts. So what we do in the next part, that will create the animation. Trust me, we do nothing. Only thing which we say out here is, we again write this chart dot animate because that's the particular method which we use all the state that what I mentioned before also, the animate does the whole tricks of iPad visual. And inside the config, 
rather than writing all these things, iPyVis will take care of that. All you need to do is we just need to write what kind of exchange we want and iPyVis is smart enough to understand. So all we say is it is true. That's a Boolean basically. And we just give a new title. Whatever we want to change, we give a new title and we again save it. We will run this now and we will see this, we see this transition here. That is something which iPyVis is doing. We will see all of them together at the very end. So maybe this transition is not so uh, visible now, but we will see this. We now see the, the split, make it false. We don't want the split anymore. We just want a typical bar chart, okay? So that's why we say the geometry is rectangle. That's the only change which we made. I mean, apart from the title and the split, the other change which we make is the bar chart. We don't like the area chart anymore. We want the bar chart. Okay, so basically it's a rectangle format to filter it. That's something we can always do using this data, uh, the data module which we which we already imported. So data dot filter. Here we choose the host only Uruguay and Qatar because those are the two extremes. If you see this Excel sheet, uh, those are the two extremes which we chose, the Uruguay and the Qatar, and uh, and we just want to zoom into the specific thing. So we chose only two of them, right? And we run this part now. Let me show you here. It's, it's running here now. I'll rerun this part again. It's zooming onto specific elements and converted to only two blocks. So not all this, uh, all this bar plot of all this thing. It's only two of them. And we achieve that using data.filter. So basically we're not visualizing each and every aspect. So it will be very nice when we connect all this thing, all these snapshots together. You'll see how nice it looks, okay? So we are just now creating this whole threads of uh, threads of snapshots and then we combine all of them together. Next part is we say the data filter, we again say none, none of them we now take back all of them after zooming, which actually zoom, uh, zoom out of it from zooming in. And we now plot all of them, but we plot as a bubble plot, okay? So we say the geometry is circle. The other thing which we use also here, apart from the other style, we add a duration. So this duration style, which is again, if you see, it's in a uh, dictionary format. We say a duration or delay to it. So basically when there will be animation, which iPyVis will again take care of, there'll be a delay between this style, okay? That's something we will animate here. We go back to uh, something called as a very simple, a bubble plot. Here we use the bubble preset chart. That's something iPyVis also offers. So gallery of all of them, if you go to the static charts, the preset charts, this is what I was speaking about. Here you can see different charts type. And if you see the code out here for them, it explicitly writes config dot bubble plot. It doesn't give you just config and it takes all these arguments inside it. You can explicitly write. So I make this bubble plot out here. You can see different bubble of full attendance. And also uh, next we come to the tree map. That's also something, a tree map which we'll create. Then again, it's usage of the preset charts basically, okay? I explicitly write config dot tree map. Like before, we don't write what kind of plots we want. Here we explicitly write that. And then we just rerun this whole part. If you see now, all of these things are happening. There's a, there's a de uh, delay in it, okay? You see that, oh, you see? There's a transition out there going happening. And then we create a tree map out of it. We say chart dot uh, animate. And there we put like say snapshot one. So we have finished writing the whole code. So let me read on this whole stuff and let's see how this animation goes from one plot to other. How iPyVisu connects each and every snapshot together. And I'm pretty sure that will be very cool to see. And I clear all the outputs. I press the rerun all. We just start from the snapshot one. And I'm expecting that we will see a nice area plot. As you can see, you see a nice area plot. If I go, there was some splitting. Then we zoom on to only two section of the data. And then we go back to all the data, to specific elements. Then we go back to all the data. Oh, there is this transition. Then we go to all the plots, the bubble plots, and we go back to a tree map. And it's still occurring here. I just missed this. Yes, look at it. It's pretty cool, right? All the tree map comes together. So this is something which is the IPyVisu plotting. There's another section which also exists. It's about the IPyVisu story, where you literally create a presentation like a more like a PowerPoint presentation out of it and that's something more cooler and that's something which I really want to also come back in the next video this was a quick video about iPyVisu if you don't go through this it's very hard to introduce to the iPyVisu story so for that you can actually go back to their uh, github repository and if you come to iPyVisu story you will see how it works it's, it's pretty useful so you just click here the next button 
it creates a whole uh, presentation or a slide which is useful when you present our data or demonstrate our data to someone else and it's more like your powerpoint presentation which we'll do so this is something is on the top of ipy visu so when you input both ipy visu and ipy visu story i keep that for the next uh, next video i hope you guys enjoy this tutorial and if you like it please write down in the comment section what you guys think about it and what do you think about ipy visu what more can we leverage from here what do you want to know more about it that will be really helpful for me and last but not the least if you like all my videos subscribe to my channel share this video and that's all for today cheers